come on, praise his holy name. For he is the reason why we're here tonight. For he is the reason why we stand here, why we're breathing. Come on, praise his name. Hallelujah. Somebody shout a hallelujah. Alguien grítale, hallelujah. Gloria a Dios, hallelujah. Just want to welcome you. Bienvenidos en este día. Welcome to Turning Point Fellowship. On behalf of Pastor Angel, welcome. YouTube, Facebook, whatever platform, whatever day that you're listening, welcome. Just know that you are missed here. Amen. All right, we're going to get started. You guys ready? Anybody came to worship? Anybody came to receive from God today? Come on, this is not just a regular Thursday, I want you to know. It's not just, oh, this one was un jueves. No, no, no. It's the Lord has something for you today. Amen. I was at my son's game right now, and let me tell you, the way I celebrate my son, this is how I want to celebrate my Jesus. I, I'm shouting. If you guys know me, you ever been in a game before? I'm shouting my lungs out, celebrating my son for every play, even his mistakes, because they're, not, they're teachable moments because he's going to learn from those things. So right now... Let's celebrate our Savior, our healer, the leader of our head. Hallelujah. All right, you guys can be seated. We're going to go through some announcements real quick just to remind you and refresh you of what, what it is that's happening here at Turning Point Fellowship. All right, women's meeting. Woo! 9 15. 9 15 women's meeting. What is it? On the 14th? Th this Saturday, right? Yeah. So this Saturday, women's meeting. Come on out. Invite a friend, uh, uh, a sister, a neighbor, a person that talks about you, invite her. Yeah, I'm serious. God changes hearts. God changes lives. That's what, that's what we're here. That's, this is why I'm here. Amen? So come on out. Pollock style. So, you know, bring some. You already know it. You already know what, what you like. Some chile verde, chile colorado, tacos, birria, lasagna. All right, we got the men's meeting. Woo! Men's meeting. We, they are asking for the deposit. So if you haven't turned on your turning in your deposit, please turn in your deposit. See Brother Tomas, Brother Fred, anybody else? Brother Andy, just turn in your deposit. Let me tell you guys, it'll be a lot easier than the day of when you're like, uh, you know, it'll be a lot easier. That's something that I've learned, and I'm, I'm actually learning. So um, life, you, you're going to hear me tell you again, it's life changing. It's life changing. Make it a point. Make it a point to be there. Inviten a alguien nuevo, a, a, a un mecánico, a alguien que, que somebody that, that you know that needs from Jesus. It will be a life-changing experience. It will be, it's beautiful. I know you guys hear about the food, but what's more important is the spiritual food. Lives and hearts and, and chains and strongholds are broken up in that mountain. Hey Amen. It, it, it changed my life. It changed my life forevermore. Amen. Prayer every Tuesday. Prayer every Tuesday. Anybody need prayer? Hey Amen. I, I need prayer. I, yeah, I, want, I want to give you guys a little testimony. Um, I love testimonies. Uh, just, you know, my wife started school. Praise God. She started school. Um, amen. So she stopped working. So guess what? That puts a little dent in my income. For those of you that have wives that work and help you out, psh, hey, praise God. You know, you guys bless. So it, it took a little dent on my income. And, um, but you know what? My trust is in God. My life, the Aldamas, are in God's hands. If I've learned anything here, it's just to trust God. My life is not my own. Oh, my sister. So, you know... So then I was praying. I said, you know what, Lord, um, uh, I'm in this season where money's a little tight, you know, but my wife's doing something that she loves to do. You know, and so she's like, you know what, I'm going to get a little part-time job. So I said, okay. I said, We're gonna, I said, I'm going to pray on it. I'm going to pray on it. And I know that I know that my God will deliver. Well, she goes, no, but you know what, these little, little things are thrown out there. And I said, no, 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 my God's going to, my God's going to provide. And, um. 
Two jobs were offered to her. Two jobs were offered. Not one. She, we were looking for one, and the Lord blessed her with two jobs. So she, she had to sit there and pick which one. And it was a, both jobs were going to go according to her schedule, not their schedule. That's my God. Amen? So prayer works. So come on. Out. You want somebody saved? Come on out. You looking for healing? You have issues in your life? That you want to get rid of? Prayer works. Come on out. Amen. Sunday. Every, every Sunday, 10 o'clock, we have a service. Wait, 945, right? 945? 945. You, come on out. You know, you want to get here earlier? You, you know, I know it's difficult to get here Sunday mornings because of what, everything that happens, the traffic, the kids. If you got, live in a house with one restroom, it's hard. Frustrated. Trying to, but you know what? We, we want to make it here. We want to praise God. We want to thank God. So you know what? You get here a little earlier, there's prayer here on Sunday mornings as well. It helps you shake everything off so when worship comes, you're already going. It's not their fault. It's, you just got to stir yourself up sometimes. Amen? Oh, man, I'm excited, man. <laughs> All right. Anything else? That's it. Are you guys ready to worship? All right. I want to read something to you. Psalms, Psalm 71, 19 says, Your righteousness reaches, in the nombre del Padre, el Hijo del Espíritu Santo, Your righteousness reaches to the skies, O Lord, who you have done great things. I know that he's done great things in your life. Who, O God, is like you, that you have made me see trouble, many and bitter. You will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and com comfort me once again. I will praise you with a heart for your faithfulness, oh my God. I will sing praises to you with the lyre, oh Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy. Somebody give him a shout, please. Somebody give him a shout of freedom. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you, by whom you have redeemed. My tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long. For those who wanted to harm me have been put to shame and confusion. Amen. Let us stand up and so we can pray. Let's bring it. Hallelujah. Everybody just close your eyes. If Lift up your hands and sing the surrender of this day. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful Thursday evening, Father. Father, and as we're here, Father, we're, we're thankful that we're able to uh, make it here, Father. Make it on time, Father. For, that it was our heart's desire, Father. For I know that I know that you have something for us today, Lord. I'm, I'm getting rid of this day, Father, this week, Father, Lord. And I, I just want to prepare that soil, Lord, within me, Lord. Father, prepare that soil, Lord, for that word that's coming, Lord. For I know that I know that my life is going to be different once I step out of this place, Lord. And as we prepare to sing praises unto you, Father, Lord, that we, we sing of your wonders, Father, of your miracles in our lives, Father, of, of, of just your greatness, Father, for great are you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for those that are coming, Lord, that are, that are, are on their way over here, that they'll make you here safely, Lord. That they'll come expecting, Lord, to hear from you, Lord. As we get ready to praise you, Father, we just silence the noise, Father. And we just, I just folk, put our eyes on you and focus on you and only you, Father, Lord. We love you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the healing that's taking place here. We thank you for the strength, the refreshness, Father, for speaking into our lives today, Lord. As we get ready to worship you, Father. Receive it, Father. For this worship comes from deep from our hearts, Lord, unto you, Lord. Be glorified. Be exalted in this place. Be magnified, King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you. We thank you for all that you do and you continue doing. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. And as you get, those of you that are going to come forward, as, as you get ready to worship, can you put the lyrics of the first song up, please? The lyric says, I am chosen. Just want you to know that you're chosen. You are chosen. What an honor. What a joy to be chosen. I am free. 
No longer in bondage, no longer in addiction. Free to worship or free to lift up his hand. Free to, Father, here I am to worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. I am living for eternity. Free forever now. You pick me up. And when people thought that your life couldn't change, he turned your life around. So as you come today, worship him with all that you have. Give him honor and glory. Amen. Come on and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, let's praise him. We have been set free. We have been called to this time. Thank you, Jesus.
Yes, we're alive to live for you. We give you our best, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, we are free to worship you. Free to praise you. Wait. 
single time he was there. And he's never failed.
You're right. 
Good evening, family. At this time, I'd ask you to please make your way back to your seats. You know, every time I get up here, I always say this is going to be short. And uh, uh, sometimes I lie. <laughs> okay. Tithing. You know, I get up here every time and, and I, I talk about tithing. And it's a tough subject. It really is because there's so many pastors out there, so many churches out there that they're making a merchandise out of their flocks. You know, but as a pastor, if I only feed you and I don't warn you, then I'm not doing your job or my job. I'm just fattening you up for the wolf. And nowadays, we're in the last days. And it's funny because that stupid Facebook, every time I say I'm going to cancel that thing. But you get addicted because you see all these charlatan pastors on there, you know. And they're, and they're fleecing their flock. So I try to balance it whenever we talk about giving. Because the reason why we do this is because giving is such a tremendous opportunity for you to be blessed by God. But it's not about money. We tend to make it all about money. And that's where everybody circles, you know, around it. But God's never going to give you, you know, if, he, if, I, if somebody walked up and said, here's a billion dollars, sounds good. But you know what? Hey, I would probably get myself in a whole lot of trouble, you know. I'd go buy that little bad Porsche I like, and I'd get so sidetracked, you know. But I'm going to build missions and do whatever. No, God's only going to give you what you can handle. Like the little kid that wanted that Red Ryder BB gun. Ain't going to happen. Going to put your eye out. Now, some people can handle it. And I hear people say, well, Abraham was rich. And you hear a lot of pastors say that you should be rich. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You know, God's going to give you what you can handle. And if you're a giver, you're not going to outgive him. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that God is not going to reward you. I'm going to sit here and tell you, you can have something in here that can't be purchased. Mark 12, 17. A couple verses that I scribbled down on my desk today. Mark 12, 17. Jesus said to them, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. He showed him the coin and said, whose is it? And the Pharisees tried to get him into a, pie, into a bind tried to get him to say, don't pay your taxes. And he said, hey, whose picture? Caesar. Well, give it to Caesar. It's Caesar's. But for us as Christians, we have a different standard. Leviticus 27.30 says, one-tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain from the fields or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord and must be set apart for him as holy. One-tenth. One tenth. That's where we get our ten percent. Ten percent. Can argue about it. Old Testament, New Testament. We're not going to go into that study right now. Just take my word for it. God never said He was going to make you rich in possessions. You can look all through the Bible. He never focuses on money. Why? It's not about money. Was Jesus poor? Let me ask you. He did. Matthew 8.20. Matthew 8.20. What does it say? Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Nowhere to lay his head. My kid was going to a church that preached everybody here has got to have, you know, $1,000 suits and you got to have a ton of money in the bank. God did not tell you to look around at the possessions of the world, and that was your glory, that was your aim. He never said, you're going to have more money when you follow me, because money does not solve your problems. Money is not going to solve anything. Jesus' intent was to make you comfortable in this life as you looked at him and as you looked up. What does tithing teach us then? Why does he tell us to give our money? Because... You can tell how close a person's walk is by looking at their checkbook. How much do they trust the Lord? 
Does it take trust? Does it take faith to give? Yeah, yeah. yeah darn right. If you only got 100 bucks and he says, give me 10 bucks, that 10 bucks is a big chunk. It doesn't mean the same to a guy that has 10,000. It just doesn't mean the same. But the Lord is doing what? Just like we prepare our kids for a world, now what do we do? We don't always give them everything they want. We don't always make it real comfortable because we're preparing them for the world. The Lord has eternity in mind. He's preparing you for eternity. And what is the language of eternity? The language of eternity is faith. And someday I'll teach on that for you guys. But the same way you're trusting him right now in faith, when you, go, when you die and you go to be with the Lord, it ain't going to end. It's not going to end. We're going to be with him everywhere he goes, and we're going to trust him in faith. Faith is the language of eternity. And right here, right now, as you're training God, as you trust him, what happens? You become more obedient for one thing. And what does Pastor Angel tell you? Obedience unlocks blessings. Don't think, don't think in a singular way, I'm going to be blessed. He's finally going to get me my Porsche. You know, he might. He might. I'm not going to tell you no. But I'm going to tell you this much. I drove around the 72 bug for a lot longer than I wanted to until he finally had mercy on me when I got old and said, okay, now I'll give you air conditioning. You know, and, and but it's just the way God works. Everything in the right time as the Lord brings us up. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Guys, it's tough. We wake up in the morning and what are we doing? We're looking around at the things that are seen, and a lot of times we're looking at them like obstacles. Don't look at that. Never look around, you know. Look up. Look up. Look at the things that are unseen because this life is just a vapor. And where are you going to spend eternity? With the Lord. With the Lord. And in a thousand years, we're going to laugh about all this and everything we went through and all that and go, man, you know, I was faltering, Lord, but you pulled through. You know, and we're going to laugh. It's going to be a whole lot different. But don't focus on the here and now, the circumstances here and now. Focus on the unseen. The same way you came to the Lord, you believe he died on the cross for all your sins. Amen? He's going to save me. All right, Lord, the rent's due at the end of the month. What are you going to do? I don't know. That's a tough one. But it's the same faith. It's the same faith. Now, I'm going to ask you to give, not because you have to give, not, not at all. Guys, your wives want to go out to dinner once in a while. What are you going to do? No? You're going to take them out, right? Hopefully they're not going to have to ask you. You know, you're going to do it. You get to the restaurant. You're going to open the door? Absolutely. Why? Because you want to right here. I love you. I'm going to open the door. You know, I would go to the store, and I'd look, and I'd see something that costs like 80 bucks, you know, a pair of tennis shoes or something. Nah, I'll go get the $20 pair because my kid needed the $80 Nikes, you know, because they really had their heart set on it. Why do I do that? Because I love my kid, you know. And I'm too old for the big old 80 $100 pairs. That's stupid. But here's the, re here's the reality. Why do I tell you to give? Not because I'm worried about God closing the doors on the church. It's his church. And you guys are his people, and he's going to take care of you. But he wants to grow you, and this is your opportunity. Just trust him. Just trust him. I know sometimes it's tough, and I don't know where each, each and every one of you are sitting. But I do know that in my life, I didn't really learn this lesson until later. But once I learned it, man, I've been so, so blessed the whole way. There is a principle that you can't outgive God. And I'm not rich, but I'm going to tell you, Lord, I sit back and I go, man, Lord, you know, you're blessing me so much here. He'll do the same for you. Because in here, he's going to put peace in there. He's going to put joy. And you're going to see his pattern of his faithfulness. But you got to unlock it. Just trust him. Step out in faith. Time to give. Amen. 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 All right. These fine, handsome young men right here, if you need an envelope, just raise your hand. The QR code is going to be up on the screen. 
if you want to give um, using the QR code, you can scan it, and uh, uh, you can give that way if you don't have cash here today. It's your opportunity. As the worship team plays, I want to encourage you to pray over your offering, bring it up, and just give it to the Lord from right here. The same way we open up the car door for our wives, out of love. We do it out of love because we love you. Amen. to give, Father God. Thank you for your love, Lord God. We give you our all this night, Lord God. We give you our surrender. We give you our yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here, Father. You are our ever-present help in time of need, Lord God. I thank you that every need will be met in this church, Lord God. Every need will be met in our homes, Lord God. Thank you for your love and your life everlasting. Amen. Okay, at this time, we are going to release our children. Give them a big hand. There they go.
There's pastors in there, youth pastors. There's the worship team in there, the sound booth. Those are the future leaders for Turning Point Fellowship, folks. Lord, move in their hearts. Build them up and use them mightily. That is great. Worship team, thank you. Okay, at this time, I'm going to ask our brother Ryan to come up here, bring the fire. All right. Lord, moving our brother mightily. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Thank you. Bring the word of prayer. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the living God. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing? Great. Praise the Lord. Man, that sounds clear. Maybe if we turn it down just a little bit, because I'm naturally a little bit. <coughs> Thank you so much. Um, welcome, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to the house of God Thursday night Bible study. Um, faith keeps us from operating at a normal level. That's what I got. Faith keeps us from operating at a normal level. And as a Christian, we're not called to operate at normal levels. Amen? Amen. We're called to, we're called the men here are called men of a higher standard. You know what? If everybody could just come on in, come on in. Let's be family this evening. Amen. We're all spread out. If you don't mind, come on in. Just bring it in. Sit with somebody if you're sitting alone. Or you can stay in your same spot if you like. <laughs> right? But that's what we could do, right? We could also stay in our same, in our same spot. The place where you're nice and comfy. You could stay right there if you like. Just look around, see how many people just want to stay comfy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the house of God. This is the house of God. Amen. So we are free. Amen. Yes. We're free. Yes, you know, uh, sometimes I myself, I like to sit in different areas to shake things up a little bit, to get out of my comfort zone, because I'll find myself, if I'm doing the same thing all the time, I got to break that up. If I'm only studying in the morning, I have to shake that up, because then I have to try and because I, I don't normally learn as well in the evening. I know pastor, he studies at sometimes like Saturday night. I mean, he studies all the time. But Saturday late Saturday night before he comes and ministers a word on Sunday morning. You know, uh, but there's times in our lives, and we'll sit in just a minute. There's times in our lives when we got to shake things up. Amen. We personally have to put, uh, apply some sort of pressure on ourselves to shake things up, to get out of the normalcy. Amen? Amen? You guys can all be seated. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2, please. All is well with pastor. Let's say that with me. All is well with pastor. All is well with pastor. Praise the Lord. He had some personal things to take care of. Okay. But all is well in Jesus' name, so there's no need to be uh, concerned of, of anything like that. Okay, family? Yes. He's alive and well. <laughs> My God, believe me. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. This is very nice. I don't know who, who did it, who made it. Wow, that's nice. Brother Eric probably, huh? Very creative. Very creative. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, and you can say amen when you're there. So the Bible says, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. If anybody could pull up diligently, like the, the definition for diligently, maybe on your phone, let me know when you have it, please. Because I literally just found out just a few hours ago that I'll be ministering this evening. And I, and I, I thought that on the, uh, just right now, actually, what that, I want to see what that definition is. 
Thomas, can you read that for us, brother? Diligently. In a way that shows care or con consciousness, conscientiousness, that's a tough one. In one's work or duties. So somebody who shows care in what it is that they're doing, right? Okay. So let's read that again. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently. Okay, so you got to literally care about this. It literally needs to matter. That's what, that's what that's saying. Diligent means it, it literally needs to matter to us. Like it needs to be a priority. This, this has to be something within us. To be able to do anything diligently, it's going to take your heart. It's going to take your inner man, your inner woman to do anything with diligence. Sometimes we do things on the job site and we're just going through motions, right? Because we've learned what it is that we have to do. And sometimes, like, those things don't actually require a heart uh, attitude, per se, to do them. We just kind of go through those emotions, uh, through those motions, excuse me. But there's certain things that, in the Word of God, that our heart matters, and it's a heart attitude. And the Bible is telling us, God is telling us, if you diligently... Obey the voice of the Lord your God. You literally pay attention, close attention, to the way you live. You're diligently obeying his voice. The Bible says in Romans that we, uh, we are led by the spirit. My sons are led by my spirit, that they hear my voice. Okay? The Bible says that, we're, we're his sheep, and we will hear his voice, and we recognize his voice. So the Bible's instructing us to diligently obey his voice. Amen? And sometimes I say, oh, this might be simple stuff. I don't mean the word of God is just, oh, it's just something we just toy with. What, what I'm saying is it's things that you guys already know. The majority of everybody here already knows this, okay? Okay. Some of us may not. So the Bible says, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings, verse 2, shall come upon you and overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So yeah, I've never, I've never read, like Pastor Joe said, I've never read that uh, God says you're to be rich. I've never read that. But, but uh, it's okay. The Lord does want us to live in abundance. He does want to prosper us in every area of our life. But it's not just financial, like Pastor Joe says. He wants to prosper, prosper us Excuse me, in, in our attitudes. In our love, uh, the way that we carry ourselves, our character. See, that's what this is about. He's working on our character. Okay? He's, 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 he's working on us. He's preparing us. See, in Genesis, it says that we're created in God's image, right? So from that point till now, he's continuously working that out so that we look and act more and more like his son Jesus every day. Amen? So that's what's being worked out with us, is our character, family. Um, let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 and 7, please. I just want to note on that. It says uh, in, in Deuteronomy, let me just, just, just bring this up. Because it says... It says, to observe carefully all his commands, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And I jumped ahead, okay? But I want to stay right there in Deuteronomy, and I'll read it to you, okay? It says that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. High above all the nations of the earth. 
You're like, what? What is that? I mean, is, is there anybody that needs translation here tonight? Okay. Um, high above all nations, we are His people. We are the people of God. We are His sons and daughters. And there are certain things that are going to take place in our lives when we line up according to His Word, when we're following His commandments that he's going to set us up just a little bit higher than, than your unsaved person on your side. Right. Maybe some of your coworkers who haven't just basically, they, they, they're not, they haven't received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. But those that have received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, you better believe that God will set you up high above all the nations of the earth. Because that's what the Bible says. And it's okay for us to, to take a hold of that. It's okay for us to believe what the word of God says. See, we're not out of the box thinking that we can be high above all the nations. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with believing the word of God. You are not exalting yourself. You're not saying, oh, look at me, I'm this or I'm that. The Bible says that God will do that. God will lift you up. Those that humble themselves will be exalted. Those that exalt themselves will be humbled. Amen? So it's okay to, to read Scripture and believe it. Amen? As a matter of fact, that's what we're called to do, family. We don't need to live beneath. We didn't, we're not doormats. We didn't become Christians so that we can be trampled upon. No, we're going to live high above. We're going to live with honor. We're going to walk and talk the way Jesus the Christ did. And we're going to live our lives according to the word of God. Amen? Amen. And, and there's promises throughout the entire Bible. Those promises are ours. Ours. O-U-R-S. Not ours, A R E S S S S. Ours. Those promises are ours. We're washed in the blood of Jesus. We have a covenant. Amen? Okay, Hebrews 11, 6. 6 and 7, please. But we'll start with one at a time, right? Hallelujah. I thank you and I glorify you, Father. Lord, I give you my heart. That's a beautiful song. I remember that song. I'm not a singer, but. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment that I'm away. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. My God, Lord, have your way in me. My God, how powerful. How powerful is that? And I'm not trying out, Enrique. That's not what's <laughs> happening here. This wasn't like a, a tryout here. That was just something stirring up in me because he's the lifter of our heads, family. And I, I just want to be used by the living God. And I know all of you that are here that come out of your way through traffic after a hard day's work, you too want to be used by the living God. Amen. And every breath that you take is to honor him. Amen? Amen? And that song is so powerful. That worship is so powerful. Whew. Engage. Engage with that. Come and get yours, family. 
those church doors open, that air goes on. Money's like, tick, 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 air goes, all that stuff. Come get yours. Everything that you need is here with Christ, with Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. God has all that you need. Amen? And the altar is holy ground. I want to encourage you to come. Right? We say that sometimes when we're doing tithes and offering or, or before we start service, come, come, come. And it's like, oh, man, they're trying to get me out of my seat. What's the big difference? Oh, it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference in your life when you make an outward declaration of your faith. When you step out of your comfort zone and step into his presence, I'm not saying if you're sitting, you're not in his presence. That's not what I'm saying. But when you take a step of faith, God is going to meet you right there. He's going to meet you right there. So I want to encourage you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Hebrews 11, verse 6, reads like this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we're going to say that together. We'll do it just like that. I'm going to just say, but without faith, and you say it. But without faith, but without faith it, is it is impossible to please him. Bible. The Bible says that it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible to please God without faith. Right? We came to him by faith, right? We confessed with our lips to somebody we didn't see. We believed in our hearts because the Holy Spirit drew us. Right? Somebody may have introduced you to Christ and whatnot, but it was the Holy Spirit that drew you. Right? It's the Holy Spirit who draws us here to the house of God. And... Um, and we did all that by faith. We received him as our Lord and our Savior by faith. We wake up in the morning praying and giving him glory. And I myself physically have not seen him. Amen? Okay. I myself. By faith, Noah. Oh, let me finish that one. Because I love the second part of this. This is just beautiful, right? It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe, must believe that he is. You must believe that he is, okay? So there's, it, it, he, first he's saying it's impossible to please me. You know, you can put all the money you can fit in there, even like the buckets overflowing. I heard people pray that the buckets overflow. All that, you could be the one overflowing the buckets, but it is impossible to please him. Because there's millionaires out there that give to charities and donate and do all kinds of stuff. They give far above than I myself have ever given, right, to these different donations and stuff. And they may even give to churches. But it says here in the Bible, it's impossible without faith to please him. So as a son, uh, I didn't grow up with a father. I didn't have a father in the household, okay? Uh, my father left when I was less than a year old. So I didn't grow up with a father figure in my home, okay? And uh, I just think, like, I see some of the boys here and the kids growing up. So they're getting so big, you know, a lot of them. Um, but they want to please their father. They want to please their father. Some of the older ones, Ever and Ivan, they're on the football fields now. You don't think when they're out there that they don't want to please their, their pops? They do. They're running harder than they ever have. They're hitting harder. They're doing what it is that they have to do at practice. They're sacrificing themselves, and a lot of that is to please their fathers. Amen. Right? Uh, like, I think about, like, the opportunities that I miss, but I also gave my father an opportunity to be a part of my life as an adult because I did finally meet him in my 20s, mid-20s, you know? And I gave him an opportunity as an adult to be a part of my life. And... Uh, so I got the yeses verbally, right? Sometimes we do that in, even in the, in the church, right? Yeah. We'll be speakers of the word but not doers of the word, right? At times, right? I know I've missed it many times. So, so he promised some things even again as an adult, but he didn't follow through because his heart wasn't there. 
His heart wasn't attached, right? Because if his heart was there, he would have followed through. You know, uh, he would have had some sort of integrity. I forgave him. I made that very clear. That was the main reason I, I paid all that money to go out there and visit him, is to forgive him personally, face to face. And then I want to see who is this guy? Who is this masked man, right? Like, like, what's he look like? Who is he, you know? And uh, so I did that. But there's children that want to please their parents. You know, a little girl gave me a, a pic. Uh, she drew me a picture the other day at church, and I thought it was beautiful, you know. And I, I, I know fathers that get pictures from their children from school, and they come home with the report cards and all this stuff. They just want to please their fathers, right, and their mothers. Don't get me wrong. Both the same on an equal level. They want to please the both of them. And when I really got a hold of, of how important it is, like, if this is, the only, this is the main way that I can please my father, the only father that I've ever experienced in life, the true father, a father who loved me regardless of anything, regardless of how I was acting, how I looked, who I was hanging out with, the things I was doing or wasn't doing, you know, regardless of anything, he loved me right there. Amen. That's what my God did. He literally loved me back to life. Amen. Literally. Like, I don't believe I was living. I was merely existing. Amen. And this love that he poured upon me was so unconditional and so overwhelmingly beautiful Amen. that all I wanted to do was please him. All I wanted to do was please him. And then, you know, when I decide to get a little bit further and grow up a little bit and actually start reading, right? I mean, can we be honest, right? Because some of us, you know, right, we're still not opening our Bibles. We're not reading, right? Like, I'm going to write some scriptures down here to, to, to just make sure I have something to reference. But I can just preach because the word is in my heart because I've taken time to get into it, Right? And when I actually read that, that it's impossible to please him, this, this, this father of mine, <laughs> right, without faith, I'm like, oh, wow, faith is important. Faith is important. It's everything, right? Like, I want to I please my father, so I want to step out of me and into him. Amen? So that's... I don't know. That's just the Holy Ghost, right? Praise the Lord. Um, so the Bible says in 11, 7, uh, I'm going to stay on 6 for a minute. Because God must believe that he is, okay, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And you heard Brother Tomas talk to you about what diligence means, with care, like it's got to be from your heart. He's a rewarder. Our God is a rewarder. You will be rewarded. Right? And it's okay. That's okay, family. You know, I'm, I'm just here because I just love the Lord, and I just, I'm going to praise him. And, 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 you know, I'm just, oh, humble am I, humble am I. I'm just, I'm just here. Just don't mind me. You know, no, no, God is going to bless you. That's okay. That's what the Bible says. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we don't, we don't have to walk in false humility as if, no, I don't need, no, 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 not me. That's, I don't need that, and I don't need this. And he knows the desires of your heart. He knows the things that you desire, family. He's a good father, right? And when we line ourselves up according to the word, and we're diligently chasing after the king, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then what's it say? And all these things... She'll be adding on to you. That's not boats, houses, and all. That's the joy of the Lord. Amen. That's the joy of the Lord. Amen. How can I walk with strength? The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. It's so simple. Everything's right there. He gives us exactly what we need. So when I'm waking up and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't know about grabbing a shovel today. Oh, Father, I love you. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I declare a thing, and I believe it in my heart. 
And next thing you know, I can handle that shovel. No matter what doctors are talking about, you'll never walk again. Are you kidding me? I can handle that shovel. Amen? Amen. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 7 reads like this. Noah, he's, he's something else. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, not yet seen, moved with godly fear. That's what Noah did. He moved with godly fear. Knowing he's heard, he moved on it. He was instructed, and he moved on it. Godly fear. Prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. I love this. Noah literally built a huge, big old ship deep inland with no water in sight. Come on, somebody. Doesn't even know what rain is. I'd like to bring your attention to a brief description of Noah's character. Okay, let's go to Genesis 6, 9. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. And I just want to share with you just a little bit of, I'm not going to get all into the story. I'm just going to share a few scriptures on the character of Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. Perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And that's it. Verse 9. Real small verse. Noah was a just man. And Noah walked with God. That's a bit of, of Noah's character, right? Let's go to another one. Verse 22. It says, Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. So we know it was a perverse generation, da 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 It's a long story. Noah, I don't know if you know the story. I, was, I told myself I'm not going to get into it, but it's a perverse generation, just evil, right? And God said, yeah. God said, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's it. It's finished. I'm going to flood you all. We're going to start this whole thing over, right? So that's a little short glimpse of it, okay? But I wanted to focus on Noah's character. Noah did according to all that God commanded him. Chapter 7, verse 5. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Are you guys seeing a pattern? Noah did everything that God commanded him to do. Let's look at chapter 7, verse... The story from the earth... Uh, 23. So God destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. But you guys know the story, right? God put Noah and his family, his kids, his wife, their, his children's wives. They instructed them to build an ark, okay? He built the ark, and then he told them everybody to get on. And that day is when the rain came from below, okay? That day. But only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. So, so Noah's character was like, I'm going to do what you say. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to do what you instruct me to do. That's all it shows is how he obeyed the commands from God. And Noah and his descendants are alive because he obeyed. See, a lot of times we think about faith. Faith is not just here. Faith is obedience, you know, because we could talk about how I'm, oh, I'm believing God. Woo, God's about to heal me. God's about to heal him. Da, 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 and then we're doing nothing about it. Right. And the Bible says faith without works is dead. Right. And then sometimes we, we, we live this life and we think that all these promises are for us. But it says right there in, in Deuteronomy 28, the blessings and the cursings. 
are, are based upon obedience are not obedient. That's what you can read it on your own, you know, and uh, you'll understand uh, that it's obedience and faith hand in hand that makes things move, makes things happen. Amen. Like Pastor Joe says, unlocks and like Pastor always says, unlocks the heavens. Amen. Faith and obedience. So let's turn to Romans 12, 3. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Romans. This is still a new Bible in a sense. It's like, I don't know, I just want to get back to my old one with pages falling out and everything. Because I could just, K-12. And look it, I even put a marker there. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Reads like this. For I say... Through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So God has given each and every one of us a measure of faith. As believers, not everybody, the whole world doesn't have a measure of faith. Believers, those who have been saved, those who have received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, have been given a measure of faith. It doesn't say a small measure, big measure, large measure, brown measure, white measure, black measure. It doesn't say the, how much the measure is, okay? It says that we've all been given a measure of faith, okay? So would you agree that we've all been given the same measure of faith? Amen. No? Okay. So maybe there's a reason for that. So um, we've all been given a measure of faith. Hallelujah. Now I know why my, my, wife, is, my wife gets cold. I'm not moving around like I normally am. It's a little chilly, huh? My hands are like, Ooh. oh, that's like, right there. This went back there a little bit. God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So he's given us this measure of faith, but it's up to us on what we're going to do with it. Amen. We've all been given a measure of faith in regards to, that's a gift, by the way, from God to each of us as believers. We've been given this measure of faith. And he gives us a measure of faith according to uh, the gift that's already on our lives, some of us, okay? There's certain things that, that you know who you are. Some people might have the, the measure of faith of giving. You might be a giver, you know, and that's a whole uh, a faith, in, and you can go above and beyond than maybe others. Some may have the measure of faith. Uh, uh, a me uh, you might be an encourager, and that's, that's faith, and he's, he's given you that. What I want to what I, what I focus on on this, on the measure of faith, is it's up to you and I to build that faith. Amen. There's nobody else that can build that faith for you. That faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17. That's how faith comes, okay? The faith comes, and then we got to work on our mind, right? Yeah. By the renewing of the mind. That's uh, right here, this chapter, Romans 12, right? We have to renew our minds, and that's through the washing of the word. That's by getting into the Bible and reading the scriptures and, and, and letting them penetrate and have their way in, in our lives. Amen. See, a lot of us want more faith and, they, and, and even want to step out in it, but they believe like, you, how can I step out in something that I don't even understand? How can you step out in something you don't understand? Or something you haven't been working on? You haven't, see, it's up to us to do something about it. You want to believe? You want, you, you want more faith? Activate it. Listen to the word of God. Be here at church on Thursdays. Be here Sunday mornings, right? It's not, you know, we come and go as if, uh, oh, I'm just, I'm feeling it today or I'm not. Just be here. Be here. Come to, that's, a, that's action. That's action. During the week, calling a brother, getting in the word with them, using it, speaking the word of God to others. Activating that faith. It's time to activate. Amen? So the term measure of faith is a spiritual gift given by God to each of us individually. 
in, in this book of Romans, he's not just, in Romans, they're not even talking to unbelievers. He's talking to believers here, okay? Look at my time. Okay, let's look at Romans 14, 23. So it's up to us, right, to grow that faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, here we go. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is what? say up there oh okay (laughs) nobody said anything so so you're kidding me for whatever is not from faith is sin so I could literally be a Christian live my life for the rest of my days and maybe not activate my faith or operate in faith right and I would be in what? Is that okay to say that? The Bible says, hello, whatever is not from faith is what? Sin. So if I'm not believing God and walking and activating my faith, I'm in? Sin. Mm-hmm. We're in sin, right? Does anybody disagree with that, Pastor Joe? If we're not walking in faith, we are in sin. That's the word of God. See, sometimes we just go through motions, right? How am I doing on time? Praise the Lord. He says, good. So sometimes we go through motions, family, and we show up here because this is where we're supposed to come. This is where I was last Sunday. This is where I've been for the last 20 years or even the last couple years or whatever. And we go through these motions. But the Bible says whatever is not from faith is sin. We need to activate our faith. We need to step out. We need to do something different. Everybody wants change, but nobody wants to do anything different. Amen? Amen. And we as leaders, we got to step out of that, right? We got to do something different for that change. We need to believe God, and believing God is walking it out. Got it, thank you. Believing God is stepping out in faith, amen? I have to activate my faith daily, daily. When those thoughts come, what's the first thing I want to say? I cast all those high high imaginations down in the name of Jesus. How dare you even try and come into my mind and and corrupt me with this nonsense. Are you serious? It's silly, right? But I'm talking to that lying lying devil who tries to put things in my head. To that one who's trying to cut me off course. He's trying to distract me with things that that the old man, the dead man, may have went after before. Come on now, right? So that's faith. That's me talking, telling my mind, line up according to the word of God. I cast all those high imaginations down. I take them into captivity in the name of Jesus. That's faith. Mm -hmm. You see that? It's something as simple as that. That's an action of faith. But we have to do this. We have to make a conscious effort to step and walk in those things, family. Right? Because we're not to be getting beat up the way we have. Right? I used to allow myself to get beat up. But I I came to to the point that I realized this, and this is how I look at it. And I hope it's not too harsh. But if, if, if a couple men came to my house, came knocking on my door, or just boom, through my door, okay? Right? Come on, somebody. I don't know. I lived the life b- before I was saved, okay? Boom, through my door and tried to take my wife. Hello. Come on, somebody. You know where I'm going, Sister Bobby Joe? 
and tried to put her down and tie her up, right? Up on a chair, duct tape, all that, right? If they tried to do that to my wife, they're probably not going to succeed or I'm going to be, you know, whatever, however it works out, right? But I'm not going to just let that happen. Amen. Yet we as believers at times, we allow that lying devil to come into our home and do what he wants when he wants to do it. Right? Right? And then we're bickering at each other and da 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 Wait a minute. Why didn't we stop him at the door? Why didn't we stop him at the door? Amen? And stand. And take a stand against that chump. He's defeated. He has no power. He has no power. The only time... He has any kind of whatever say so in your life is when you allow sin into it. Okay? That, there's that word again, sin. When we allow sin in, he's welcome, family. He's welcome. Okay? So don't ever question what's going on. Just take a look in the mirror. I'm not saying you guys here... On YouTube, Facebook land. Take a look in the mirror. How are you living? How have you decided to live your life? Are you honoring God with your life? You are or you're not? If you're not, whatever is not from faith is? He has rights. Defeated, no power, and we give them rights. We give them the right to have his way. Does that mean we're going to live this perfect, la, 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 la. This is me and my wife, and we're happy, and hallelujah. Is everything going to be perfect? No. No, that's not reality. There's going to be trials and tribulations. The Bible is very clear on all that. But there's other things that we don't have to put up with no longer. We could say no. Enough is enough. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, you know, uh, my wife doesn't, like, she doesn't, like, raise up on, on a brother. She doesn't. She's a little bit louder than a brother. Right? She, she could be a little bit louder than a brother. But my mama, my 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 I don't know why I can't spit it out. I'm getting nervous because she's right there looking at me. My 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 wife. My leg is shaking. No, just kidding. She doesn't raise up on me. She's not in my face and all this stuff. None of that stuff takes place because I've yielded my life. Right? I'm not perfect, and none of us here are perfect. You may not be perfect either, man. You may not be perfect. You may, none of us are perfect. And none of us are called to be perfect. There's only one that was ever perfect, and his name is Jesus the Christ. And he's the only one that will ever be perfect, family. So we don't have to walk that tight fence of perfection because that's not what he wants. He wants us to be who we are, but to honor him with our lives. Amen? Amen. To honor him with our lives. Matthew chapter 17. Hallelujah to the living God. So faith is something that we have to exercise. Amen? Like literally make a point of it. Like I'm going to step out in faith right here, Brother Ray. Like literally, like I talk to myself sometimes. Like, I'm going to step out in faith right here. I'm going to step out in faith right here. I'm going to go grab a whole bunch of uh, uh, sausage McGriddles and bring them over here to the, the homeless, you know. And I did it. So that's stepping out in faith, right? I may not have that money to do that at that time, but I speak to myself like, I'm going to step out in faith right here. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out in faith right here. You know, when you walk by that, that, that couple who might be a little bit in an argument, maybe it's not too heated. Maybe it's not too crazy, you know, because you want to use wisdom, right? But maybe they're having a little argument. I'm like, hey, you guys good? You guys all right? 
I'd love to pray with you if you allow me. That's stepping out in faith, right? Or you hear those brothers at work that just cursing and cursing. Hey, bro, man, you got a rotten mouth. Sound like a trucker out here. I thought we were plumbers. <laughs> plumbers see plumbers don't cuss. No, I'm just uh, so praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you, family, to step out in faith. And it starts at our home. Everybody, remember that. Everybody wants change, but nobody wants to do anything different. We're stuck with our program. Uh, this is the program I watch at this time. I sit on this chair, right? I eat at this time, right? Everything. Everything's like this program, right? It's like this big old system that we are called to live above. Amen? We're not the world. We don't have to entertain and carry ourselves as the world. Some of you guys have, have children that are in football. Have you ever thought about what you're doing at that football field? You think it's a coincidence? Oh, this is just a normal thing. Kids go to high school and they play football. So I'm going to the football game. Grab my wife. Here, we're going to the football game. Yeah, we cheer on our kid. And there's 3,200 other people there who don't know Jesus. Have no idea how you're living your life. Have no idea of the love of Jesus the Christ. And you think you're there just for your son. And I know some of us here always reach out. But there's some of us that maybe don't. He puts us in situations for reasons. Everywhere I go, I'm like, what's up, Pop? What you got? What are you sending me? What's up? What's up? And I'm, I'm silly like that because we have a relationship. See, Noah walked with God. Otherwise, that brother ain't going to build a boat out there in the middle of the dirt. The Bible says he walked with God, right? So we have to have relationship. God wants to hear from us. He wants to speak with us. He wants to engage with us. Amen? He wants to be one with us. That's why he created us in his image so we could chop it up. Right? Because if you're not like somebody else, it's going to take a long time to kind of break through and be able to have a conversation that you guys all may be interested in. Right? But God said he made us in his image. Right? So, so how am I doing on time, brother? Seriously, I, I have to obey, be obedient. Thank you very much. So, um, Matthew 17. And when they had come to the multitude, a man, seven, we're starting in verse 14. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic, epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. You know, when I, when I read verse 17, it sounds like he's a little bit like, oh, my God, what am I going to do with you guys, right? So, so if it's impossible to please God without faith, right, you can see that. You can, you can see the frustration there a little bit, right? Because when we're not operating in faith, he's a little bit frustrated with us. He's like, I'll give you everything that you need. I'll supply all your needs through my riches and glory. Just seek me first and put me first in your life. I got you. You'll never have to worry about, right, Matthew? Never have to worry about what you wear or what you eat. And he goes on and on and on. I'll strengthen you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Feeling a little weak today, brother? I got you. Don't trip. I'll strengthen you. Praise me a little bit. Give me a little glory. Yeah, give me a little hallelujah. You'll be strengthened up. Everything. He's got us, family. And all he wants us to do is believe and walk it out. Amen? Amen. With faith. So you see, he gets a little frustrated right here. Then it says, bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked, rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that hour. A while back, I mentioned on the, on the prayer thread of, 
a nephew, uh, my wife's nephew, and, and he's epileptic. And he was having all kinds of bad problems. His name is Kasim. And uh, we prayed and we believed. I went to the house. I rebuked the demon. Boom, because the demon's got to go, right? And I laid hands on him. And he hasn't had an attack since. It has nothing to do with Brother Ryan. It has to do with God. We have to believe and we have to activate. We got to step out and take a step of faith, family. I love you guys. God bless you. We're done. Because I don't know. I think we're done. Hallelujah to the living God. Father, I thank you and I bless you, Lord. I thank you for this word, Lord, that you've given us this evening, Father. I believe that it falls on good ground, Father. Lord, I ask that you, you help us, Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, speak to us this week. Speak to us this week, Father. Show us where we need to step out in faith, Father. Show us what it is that you have for us to do for you, Father. We desire to be well-pleasing to you, my Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory with our lips, Father, and now we want to be doers of your word, Father. There's many that are out there that are afflicted. There's many that are hurting and broken and lost, Father. Show us who they are and put them before us as individuals, Lord. Father, I ask that you bless each and everybody here, every family that's represented here this evening and those that weren't able to attend, Father. Bless them in their homes, in their hearts, in their minds. From the top of the head to the bottom of their feet, bless them. And have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You're all released. God bless you, family. Thank you, Jesus. If